Hi guys, SDGRSNF88 speaking. We're a review of the Hornby Scaled Out East uh, Engine Shed. Now, as uh, some of you may know, I went to the Shipton Mallet Toy and Train Fair uh, last weekend, which was February the 2nd, and I got a number of items. Uh, I got two new wagons, uh, which I plan to do reviews of in the future, and I got this uh, beautiful engine shed. Now, I've been looking for one for quite a while to replace my old uh, Hornby one. Now, this is the old Hornby one in question. Uh, it's the plastic kit um, that they give in the, um, well they sell it separately, but they also do it in like uh, starter building packs for their uh, track mat set. And I got one of those packs, it came with um, a signal box and a few plate layers, huts and uh, telegraph poles and stuff like that. Um, because at the time, this was many, many years ago, I was actually going to build the track mat. Um, that's about nearly 10 years ago now. Um, no, not nearly 10, about, sorry, about 7 years ago this was. Um, I was going to build the track mat, which back then was the old type track mat, so not the one they currently have, it was the one before that. So I was going to build that and have an LNER region layout, and basically this came with it. And as you can see, it's not up to the standard that I would like it to be. As you can see, it's quite... Well, I never really fitted in from the start anyway, but as you can see, it's quite... The stickers never went on properly, the windows have got a bit funny, and the overall look of the shed is a bit toy-like. But I'm sure you can bring these up to standards, and I, ha uh, I have seen somebody um, bring one uh, up to a really good standard. He's, he's done all the facing with Metcalf um, uh, card, uh, brick paper sort of thing, brick card or whatever, and on the roof, he's done the tiles as well, and it looks so much better. You also weather it down, and it does look a bit... Uh, you know, a lot better, but I would like something that was a bit more S and D like, if you know what I mean. And sure enough, that's where this engine shed came in. Now, this is a double road engine shed, and these are very, very hard to find. As I, I must state, this one is not in the current range at the moment, and they made this one a number of years ago. Um, I'm not sure of the precise date when this one was made, but I reckon this one, uh, judging by the uh, the name of it, which is Scaled Out East, uh, I presume it is quite well that the the first lot that Scaled Out made. Because um, Scaledale has been around for nearly about 10 years now, and I reckon this one's about 7 years old, no, maybe about 5 years old now, I don't know. Because um, uh, the early Scaledale uh, uh, range always used to, um, the name of the location always used to be Scaledale Suffolk. And now they've got like proper names um, of places, well not real names, but you know, it doesn't have Scaledale in the name, they've sort of moved out of the village as they say. Um, but yeah, so this one's, um, you sadly can't get it on the normal range anymore, but if you go to toy and train fairs like what I did, or Troll eBay, you probably can find them. But they do tend to be very, very expensive. Um, brand new in the shop, these now uh, tend to cost around £40. Although that even that that's just for a single road one, uh, which they currently, which uh, Hornby and Batman sort of currently make, because they don't make any double road ones anymore, which is quite annoying. Which is why I had to resort to finding one there. Um, and they they, did, they tend to sell around for forty pounds. It's the same for a second hand one on eBay. But I got mine for the amazing value of well, it says twenty five pounds on the box, but I bartered a bit and I got it down to twenty pounds. So that was amazing value and. Before you ask, it was it's brand new. It's never been used. It's still it was still sealed in its um uh you know a plastic bag inside the polystyrene block. So uh, yeah, I was I was I'm over the moon with it. So um, reason for choosing this shed: uh, one, double road, so that's perfect for my yard. Uh, two, it's stone, which will go well with uh, my other building uh, over there, which I got a few years ago. Now it's a bit dusty, but that'll be reinstalled. It is um. A water tower, as you can see, and it is also stone. Uh, let's put it a bit. If I put that back down there, there's a picture on the back of the box. I wonder if it is this. Oh no, it's a slightly different uh, water tower. But um, yeah, so there's also a list of the other buildings that you get with it. But it was part of this um, East um, scaled out East, which I presume was supposed to replicate sort of uh, Eastern region buildings. But um, which, <laughs> but this this building. Um, sort of looks like well the engine sheds that was on the S and D. It's sort of the same type of brick and also the same sort of style with the uh, arched uh, entrances and the sort of um, you yeah, know the 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 vent which lets all the um, I'm not sure what to call it but the the, the, bit, the bit on the roof basically which all the steam uh, from the engines used to escape from. Um, that's sort of like the same as it was on the S and D. Uh, what well, some of the buildings that were found on the S and D. So that's why I love it. That's what that was the third reason basically for why I got it. Um, so anyway, uh, let's crack open the box. 
well, not not literally crack open the box. I hope you can see this because uh, I'm, 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 again, I'm looking at the box, but um, the camera is probably looking in a totally different area. Anyway, as I mentioned, it comes in this polystyrene uh, block. Now you've got to be careful pulling these out, as as you can see here, they do tend to uh, fall apart quite easy. That wasn't me. That was actually uh, the stool. Um, at the the trade stand, they got it out for me, so maybe that was maybe one of the re reasons why I got it a few quid slightly knocked off um, a bit. But they they got it out for, and showed me it to prove it was brand new, and uh, yeah, it definitely proved it was brand new. Uh, so there we go. I'll put the box to one side a moment. The box is a normal card box. It's a bit flimsy, so you got to be careful if you want to keep the box right. Anyway, let's make a bit of a mess with the polystyrene. So the polystyrene simply just pops open like this revealing the roof of the shed and as you can see it's in a plastic bag as I mentioned um, it's very very tight snug fit I've got a funny feeling it only fits in the one way uh, because yeah, yeah it looks like that because it's got like a little separation spike down there for the um, for the the, sep the the pillar uh, on the front of the shed so yeah, let's remove it from the bag off camera uh, flip that upside down and maybe we can rest it on top of there and there we have it move the tripod around a bit but anyway um, what can I say it's a stunning building it's got quite a bit of weight to it uh, the detail on it is amazing they've um, these buildings are very very well captured uh, I'm not sure of the precise building it's based on but as I mentioned it does look like an S&D building uh, but you can see it's got all the bricks and mortar it's really really been well painted um, the, the, I, I, I'm not sure really what how to compare it to um, any other um, scale down range buildings as I only have a few I have a signal box which is out of shot um, behind um, well basically yeah, behind the camera which I've got on the layout and I've also got the um, water towers I just previously showed you and the only other buildings I've got which sort of are like scale down range are the Batman scene craft ones uh, I think that's what they are um, I forgot the name but it's, it's, it's a Batman I know it's Batman scene scene crafts I think um, and I got the um, Shillingston Signal box, good shed, and plate layers hut, which is for Compton Martin, as you know. But anyway, this, so this is what <laughs> one of the um, all my other buildings on the layout tend to be Metcalf kits. So this is a quite a rarity to have a Scaledale building on there. Anyway, so let's start with the front of the building. As you can see, we've got the um, the two uh, entrances um, with the pillar separating them. Um, you've got the another little vent there in the top. Sorry if I'm blabbering a bit because I've never really done a review of a building and half the things I don't know about the sort of buildings, it's hard to re review them if you know what I mean. So anyway, um, let's continue. They've really, really well captured, well they've really captured these arches really, really well with, with like the sort of the, the stone that, that would have been used to, because you know, obviously you have to use stronger stone at the bottom of arches sort of thing. It's been really, really well, well captured. I mean, just a brick on the pillar there. And we move on to, uh, one thing I could add that um, hasn't been uh, added is the sort of smoke. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the front of the building would probably have a lot of smoke going up it from the engines passing underneath and uh, being cold in there, sort of thing, uh, you know, being stoked up in there. So um, maybe I could weather that in. I'm not sure what, whether I'd do it or not. It depends um, how much time i got because, as you know, I'm a bit pressured for time at the moment with sort of things. But, um, yeah, uh, moving on to the sides, we've got the beautiful brickwork again, as I showed you earlier. We've got these really, really well-captured windows. These are all separate. Um, as you can see, they're they are see-through um yeah they, they look like they've been separately fitted um and glued in uh, i think so yeah i don't want to press one out in case it falls out because i have a habit of doing that um then we've also got this um lovely uh, drain pipe which um appears to be molded down the side but as you can see where it gets to the top there if i move my finger it is actually uh separate so um yeah i think that's molded but it's been crafted out which is very very well done um then we've got the roof. Again, the tiles do look a bit clean, uh, but they have been weathered slightly, as you can see in certain areas. Um, it does look a bit lighter up in here because I've got a spotlight. Um, you know, I've got one of the bar lights, and they do tend to make things look lighter than what they are. Um, but yeah, it is very, very well done. Again, weathering could be done there, especially around here where all the steam would escape from inside the shed. Now, um, another reason why I like the shed is has uh, no entrances on the back. It's not one of those sheds you could drive totally through, uh, all the way through. It has a back to it, uh, which again is like a building on the S and D, and this will fit perfectly in on the yard um, because obviously behind the yard is the 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 girder, 
I was going to say back scene, but it's, <laughs> there's now a back scene there as well. So yeah, we could say back scene girder or whatever. But it's basically, you know, the trains can't go any further. So it's perfect that it's actually got this um, back to it. Also, another thing I've just noticed, it's got what appears to be this wooden uh, sort of style um, design up here, which is, you know, the, holding the roof uh, up. I should know all these sort of things, considering my dad's a builder. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, the joist, that's it, the joist. Uh, I'm probably wrong, but there we are. The joist of the building there. Uh, again, we've got another one of those uh, vents on the back. And also, you can see that the uh, detail on the, the vent on the roof is also uh, wood. So yeah, all in all, a very, very nice building. And I'm amazed with the price I've got it for. So I'll just pause the video here, as I obviously can't do a running video. <laughs> well, if the layout, if the yard was fully done, I would do um, a video of it on the track with uh, locos going in and out of it. But at the moment, I don't. So I'll just pause it here, and I'll show you where I'm going to put it. And here's the engine shed in position. Now, as you can see, I've also uh, put the uh, water tower next to it this time. Uh, as I did show this in my previous update where it's going to go, but um, I thought I'd do it again for the this review. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the two tracks, um, you can still you can see where the old ones are too, but they're going to be reinstalled because the, the way I've re -re redesigned all this track is that the front two lines weren't really affected. Uh, so they're going to go back in precisely the same place where they were too. Uh, but the two lines at the back have been slightly changed in all the points down here uh, and have been changed. As you can see, the the original bit of track actually went under where I've been doing all this hill. That will feature in another update because I've done a bit more to that. Um, so anyway, um, as you can see, the, uh, there'll be the one track going in on that side, one track going on that, that side. You can see that I didn't do that one too straight originally. And as you can see, it probably collided with the pillar. But um, hence, redoing the whole yard, that will now fit in and I'll design it around the edge of shed so both uh, the locomotives, both uh, rails will fit in there perfectly. Now. Um, here I plan to do a coaling, uh, a, you know, a coaling uh, yard sort of thing for the engines. Um, I have another building that's going to go there, sort of thing. It's like a hopper thing. It was there originally. That'll go back in there, along with the water tower. And instead of being two tracks, that'll just be a single track coming off of there. Uh, so yeah, uh, but it looks perfect there. I, I, it, I must admit the stonework is slightly different between the two buildings, but it's much better than having uh, stone and then red brick. <laughs> so yeah, and, it, and, it, and stone is more, um, like again, I keep on referring to the S&D, but the S&D uh, did use um, stone for quite a lot of the buildings, uh, judged by them as well, because um, I've seen a few of their sheds, and a few of the sheds, well, they used a variety of materials, but quite a few of them were stone. Uh, and the one at Bath Green Park, I think half of it, was a bit of it was stone like this, but most of it was actually made of wood. Uh, so I know Batman do a wooden engine shed, but sadly it's only a single road. So hence the reason why I got uh, a, I had to get a double road. But anyway, I'm I'm over the, over the moon with this uh, model, and I hope you are too. So uh, any tips for um, would I recommend it? Yes. Um, the, the 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 overall design of the building is well. I'm trying to figure words to describe because it's not a locomotive, but it's a uh, well. It's it's really really well detailed. Um, the, the the brickwork has been captured excellent excellently. The windows have two, uh, the guttering as well, and the roof. Uh, a slight downfall fall with it is the um, it needs a bit of weathering on the front, and also uh, I forgot to mention it, but the inside is the plain resin. So yeah, um, that's one a, a room for improvement. But obviously you could do that yourself, sort of thing. And uh, you know, maybe that's why they did it, so you can you know, make it your own sort of thing. But I'm gonna for the time being, I'm gonna keep it as it is. And as I said, it just, it's just a stunning model, uh, and I would highly recommend it. So if you're trying to find one, uh, keep an eye on eBay or go, to, like me, to a toy and train fair, and you never know what you'll find. So uh, anyway, this has been SDJR, Senef88 speaking, and uh, thanks for watching.